All right, in this video, we're going to look at a few uh, sample questions from the DMA40 portion of the placement test. And before we jump into it, uh, the topics in DMA40 are algebraic expressions, linear equations, and linear inequalities. Though these next five questions that I cover might not cover all these topics in detail, you can always find more videos at the following website here. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first question that you may encounter are something very similar. The tick marks on the number line above are equally spaced. The expression y squared plus 2x is equal to what? We've got to figure that out. Well, y squared plus 2x, we have to figure out what y is, and then we're going to plug it in, and we've got to figure out what x is, and then we're going to plug that in. So let's look at our x right here. Now here's 0, here's negative 1, and since everything's equally spaced, Notice between 0 and negative 1, we have 1, 2, 3 equal spaces. And the same thing happens between like 0 and positive 1. So think about it like this. I'm going I'm to go over here before I come back over here just because we're dealing with positive numbers. But this is 0. Think of this right here as being 1 third. Think of this little tick mark here as being 2 thirds. And think of the 1 as being 3 thirds. So one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. Well, notice three-thirds, three divided by three is one. So that's our equally spaced pieces that make up all these tick marks. So if we go backwards from zero, if we go to the negative direction, we have negative one-third, negative two-thirds, negative three-thirds. And it still works the same way. You know, notice negative three-thirds, negative three over three is negative one. So what is x equal to? negative one-third, negative two-thirds. That's what x is equal to. Negative two-thirds. All right. Now, um, we got to figure out what y is as well, and that's way over here. And you might notice, well, if that's one, it looks like that's going to be two because everything's equally spaced. Well, let's keep on doing the thirds, and uh, you'll see how it is equal to two. One-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, four-thirds, five-thirds. Notice this right here would be six-thirds and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So therefore y equals 2. Now we want to take these two numbers and plug them into this expression. So we have y squared plus 2x. Remember we said y was equal to 2. So we want to take 2 and square it plus 2 times whatever x is. We want to plug in x and that's negative 2 thirds. Now this problem here would probably be non-calculator active, so you can, you know, a little bit of arithmetic. 2 squared, that's going to be equal to 4. And here we have 2 times negative 2 thirds. You need to remember how to multiply fractions. Top times top, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 1 times 3 is 3. And I'll bring down the plus um, from above. Now remember, whenever you add a negative number, that really means subtract. So 4 plus a negative 4 thirds is the same thing as 4 minus 4 thirds. Now, a DMA, so this is some DMA 20 uh, material now. We have to figure out how to subtract these two fractions. We need a common denominator, and right now our two denominators are 3 and 1, so a common denominator would be 3. All right. Now you can think about it like this. Remember, this number was originally 4, or 4 over 1. Well, what over 3 will be 4? That's going to be 12, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. Just in case you forget that, remember we had a 1 back here. 1 times 3 will give us that 3 right there. Therefore, 4 times 3 will give us that 12 right there. So, you know, we found a common denominator, and now we have the same fraction, or the same number, as what we have right here. Now the second fraction does not change because we did not change the denominator from here to here. So now we can subtract these two. 12 thirds minus 4 thirds. Remember when you subtract fractions, top minus top, 12 minus 4 is 8, and you do not change that denominator. And since that fraction will not simplify, that will be our answer to that question. Number two. A party store charges an initial charge of $20 to rent a costume plus, plus hmm, an additional $8 per day for each day the costume is rented. Which of the following represents the cost in dollars to rent a costume for N days? So N represents the number of days that you're going to rent this costume. Well, since they charge an initial charge of $20, automatically, right off the bat, you got to pay $20 bucks just to get the costume plus 
an additional $8 per day. So it's not going to be 20 plus 8 because this right here, the $8 per day, remember we said N is the number of days. So depending on how many days you get it, this could be 8 times 1 day, that would be $8. 8 times 2 days, that will be $16. But this right here is going to represent your total cost. The $20 initial charge, that's what you pay like a flat rate, plus you're going to pay $8 per day. Now that matches this right here. But uh, let me explain this to you a little bit more in detail. Suppose you did just rent the costume in days. So suppose you rented a costume for one day. you got to pay that initial charge plus $8. And really it's just 8 times 1 because you're renting it for one day. Well, that's going to cost you 28 bucks. Suppose you rented it for two days. Still, to go into the store and get the costume, you're going to pay that initial charge. Now, this initial charge, you only pay it one time. You only pay 20 bucks one time, but you're going to pay $8 times the number of days that you rent it. So you're going to pay 16 bucks right here on top of the $20 that you initially paid. So 20 plus, this is 16, that's going to be 36. And this would continue on. That 20 remains constant, and that's, how, that's what we call that 20. Since it never changes, that's going to always be your initial charge. The thing that does vary is going to be the $8 per day, because this can change depending on how many days you rent it for. But uh, that's it for number two. Let's have a look at number three. Julia purchased, or Julie purchased a treadmill that originally cost T dollars at a discount of 8%. Which of the following represents the amount in dollars that Julie paid for the treadmill after the discount? 8%, this right here might be enough to um, help you get it right. 8%, you have to remember from DMA 20 and DMA 30 that 8% is the same thing as 0 .08. This is a percent, this is a decimal. And a little shortcut there, D to P, decimal to percent or percent to decimal. Depending on which way you want to go, this kind of reminds you which way to move the decimal. Since we have a percent here and we want to convert this percent to a decimal, we move the decimal two places left. So notice if my decimal was right here, that's one place to the left, two places to the left, and that's why I have point zero. we got to add a zero in there. So 0 0.08. Um, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to put a zero out in the front there, but it, it's no big deal. Um, but notice also we drop the percent symbol. And the reason why you want to remember this is because it, when you're doing arithmetic, you know, when you're trying to multiply, add, subtract, and all that stuff with percentages, definitely multiplying and dividing, you need to convert it to a decimal first. So 0 0.08. I don't see a 0 0.08 there. I, don't, I do see a 0 0.08 there. I do see one there, and I do see one there. Well, this one right here doesn't really make sense because notice the original cost. Remember, Julie paid, uh, Ju Julie purchased a treadmill that originally cost T dollars. So the original cost was T, but then she got it at a discount of 8%. So you might say, well, it's going to be the original cost minus 0.08. Now, this does not make sense, and plus, you don't even see it over here as one of these answers because all this would really mean is the original cost minus 8 cents. Think about money, that's eight cents. Well, the way we find a percentage of, of something, a percentage of something would to be to multiply it by the original cost. The original cost minus 8% of the original cost. That is going to be the one that we want. And notice it matches that one right there. This one, question C doesn't make sense because this is saying that Julie purchased it at the original cost plus 8% of the original cost. Well, that would put Julie purchasing that treadmill for more than what the original cost was. And then this one right here is kind of like what I said back when I just wrote T minus 0.08. That would be like subtracting 8 cents off the price. Um, this would be adding 8 cents to the price. So that doesn't make sense either. This is your best one to go with right there. Or the only one. Number four. A long distance cell phone service offers a plan that costs $20 per month. So uh, let's keep on reading. Plus, hmm, 40 cents per minute. Which of the following represents the total cost of this service for a month? So that's for one month in which n minutes were used. So since we're talking about the price for a month, automatically you're going to pay $20 per month. So we got 20 bucks plus, and this is just like that costume problem earlier you're going to pay 40 cents per minute that you use. So 40 cents is 0.40 and n is the number of minutes. 
This is just like the costume problem where we had an initial charge. Here is $20 per month, plus we're going to pay 40 cents times the number of minutes. So like, for example, suppose you, for that month, you didn't use any minutes. Well, if you didn't use any minutes, you're not going to pay 40 cents at all, but you still got to pay that $20 per month. And notice if we said $20 per month, suppose you used zero minutes that month, that right there just becomes zero, so you're still going to pay that 20 bucks. Whereas suppose you didn't use your phone a lot and you only made, you only talked for one minute that month. You can pay 20 bucks plus the 40 cents times the number of minutes that you used. So if you only used one minute, you're going to pay $20 plus... 40 cents times one is just 40 cents, so that will give you a total that month for $20.40. But hopefully you can see now, as the number of minutes that you use go up, you're going to increase your cost by 40 cents for every extra minute that you use. So this is uh, this one right here. Be careful. Don't do four times in. That will be $4 per minute. We want to make sure we use the .4. I know I wrote .40, but that's the same thing right there. None of these other ones would apply. That plus right there can kind of be helpful too in some problems, making sure that you're adding somewhere instead of just multiplying like you see in A and B. One more sample question, and then finally we're solving an equation. So uh, x over 3 minus 2 is equal to 5x minus 2. Now let me go ahead and give you, since this uh, placement test is multiple choice, you know, one of the things that a lot of you might be doing is just saying, hey, let's plug them in and see which one works. Um, it turns out if we plug in zero, zero is going to be the answer to this problem. Um, let's just go ahead and look at that. What's zero divided by three? That's zero. Minus two, bring that down, is equal to five times, remember we plugged in zero, five times zero, zero. Bring down your minus two. And notice zero minus two, well that's negative two, and zero minus two, that's negative two. And notice negative 2 equals negative 2. So our answer is going to be 0, but I definitely can't um, just end this video without showing you how to get the answer of 0. Plus, this is a common mistake that a lot of DMA 40 students make in regards to getting 0 for an answer. They'll say it's no solution or something like that. Now, here's how I like to deal with problems or equations. Since we have an expression equal to an expression, that forms an equation. If you have an equation that has a fraction in it, which we have one here, the way to get rid of that fraction or multiple fractions is to multiply every single piece by a common denominator. Even though you might say these aren't fractions, technically they are. All these denominators are one. So let's multiply every single piece by three because a common denominator for all four of these pieces would be three. So when we multiply by three, I'm just gonna stick a three up here at the top. I'm going to stick a 3 right here in front of that 2. I'm going to stick a 3 right here in front of that 5, and I'm going to stick a 3 right there in front of that 2, or you might say negative 2. But anyway, we're multiplying every single piece by 3. Well, 3 times x divided by 3, the whole point of doing this is to get rid of that fraction. 3 times something divided by 3, the 3's just cancel out, and you're left with x. Minus 3 times 2 is 6, equals 3 times 5 is 15. Don't forget your x. And then we have minus 6. Now you want to try to get x by itself. Um, the best way to get x by itself here, I like to move my constants around first. Let's add this 6 to this side. And notice when you do that, the 6s actually end up canceling out. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. But since we have something else left over here, most of the time it's just fine to cancel that out. And we're left with x on this side is equal to 15x. Well, notice what happens here. We could say plus 0 because negative 6 plus 6 is 0. But more times than none, it's just, I mean, it's so totally okay for you just to not write anything there since we have something else to bring down. Now, I'm talking about, you know, it's okay to cancel out when you have something to bring down. It's okay to cancel out as long as you have something else to bring down. Now, we want to get x's on one side. Let's subtract this x from both sides, and notice what's going to happen. Yes, x minus x is 0. Just like, you know, negative 6 plus 6 was 0 and we canceled it out. You can cancel it out if you want, but the thing is, this is where you have to be careful. Here's where a lot of mistakes come in. There is nothing else over here to bring down. So technically, you do need to show a 0 over here. Um, notice my equals. I'm keeping those nice and lined up. 
but there's nothing else to bring down. So x minus x is zero. Over here, 15x minus uh, understood 1x is 14x. Now, what we're stuck with here is 14x. That means 14 times something gives us zero. Well, 14 times zero will give us zero. And a common way we show that with the equations is to divide here because we're trying to get rid of the 14s. 14 divided by 14 is one. So 1x is just x, and 0 divided by 14 is 0. So there is our solution to that problem as well. Again, a multiple choice strategy here was to start it off exactly like I did. Take your answers and plug them in and see which one works. But here's the technical way to do it, the algebraic approach. Now, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, um, the, though these five questions don't cover all these topics, for example, we did not look at any linear inequalities, you can find plenty of videos at the following website that will cover all these topics that are in DMA 40. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.